So when Nikon launched their Z series cameras, you'll remember there was quite a lot of debate around a number of topics, one being the single memory card slot, but the other one you may remember was around the battery life and the fact that the advertised battery life was around 330 to 400 shots off a single EN EL15B battery. With mirrorless cameras, there's obviously a great dependency on batteries with the EVF, the LCD, um, and therefore it's increasingly important to us as photographers and videographers about how do we ensure that we don't run out of battery when we're out in the field. So in this video, we're gonna look at a number of different battery chargers, a number of different power adapters that we can use to charge and recharge our Nikon Z series cameras. One of the great things about transitioning from a Nikon DSLR like the D850 to a Z series camera is that Nikon have very cleverly kept the batteries very similar. The EN EL15 line of batteries is common between the different cameras. The only real difference is that the A version, which um, was the one that the D850 used, um, doesn't have the capability like the B series battery to be charged in camera. However, when we look at what the cameras achieve with those batteries, if we look at the D850, we were, you know, I was really impressed with the battery life on that. If you look at the SEPA life, it was about 1840 shots using the viewfinder, and I was regularly exceeding that with the battery. So one battery would last well in excess of a day. When you come to the Z series cameras, the SEPA um, battery life for the Z7 and Z6 is about 330 shots if you're using the EVF and 400 if you're using the LCD. So a massive difference from where the D850 was. And this caused some debate when the Z series was originally launched. The real world though is that I'm getting in excess of 1,200 shots on um, my Z6 and Z7 with a single battery. So it's the SEPA um, battery life is slightly deceptive. They use a particular profile of usage which perhaps isn't similar to mine and may not be similar to yours. That said, there are more demands on a battery in a mirrorless camera. You're using an EVF, you're using the LCD more perhaps, and perhaps you're doing more video. So keeping your batteries charged is really important. And I thought it would be really useful to take a real world look at some of the options for charging and recharging your EN EL15 batteries, both in camera and out of camera, and when you have access to mains charging and when you're out in the field. So I've got four different battery chargers, a number of different power blocks, which gives me nine different ways of charging the ENEL15 battery. And we're going to take a real world look at those. So let's take a look at the lineup. First off, we've got the Nikon MH25 charger, which comes with the Z6 and Z7. It plugs into the mains and has been the normal charger that came with the D800, D810 and D850 also. If you have to buy this separately, it, co it will cost you between 50 and 60 pounds here in the UK. Um, it charges one battery which slots into the side and the output voltage from this is 8.4 volts and 1.2 amps, so it's about a 10 watt charger. It weighs about 112 grams and when you add the cable to that, it comes up to about 200 grams. Now what I've done with each of the chargers is I've looked at a theoretical time to charge based on a 20% um, energy loss. And in theory, this charger should charge one EN EL15B battery in about one hour, 54 minutes. It's a fairly compact charger. Um, it's simple, there's no LCD and it can be adapted to work on whatever main socket you're using wherever you are in the world. The second charger we've got is the Nikon EH7P charger, which has a charging block that plugs into the mains and then a USB-C cable which plugs into your camera and allows you to charge the batteries in camera. 
and which comes included in the Z7 bundle with the FTZ adapter and the 2470F4 lens, but it doesn't come with any of the other bundles. Slightly more restricted because it comes with an um, adapter that is specific to your type of socket, so the three pin here in the UK. You can buy it separately, it retails at about £45 here in the UK and can obviously only charge one battery. The power of this on the side is that it's a 5 watt charger with 3 amps, so it's a 15 watt charger, so in theory it should charge quicker than the MH25 charger. It weighs in at about 166 grams, um, doesn't have an LCD, obviously it's fairly straightforward and in theory, based on the spec on the side of this charger, it should charge one EN EL15B battery in about 46 minutes. However, when you look at what Nikon says, they state that this will charge one battery in camera in about 2 hours 35 minutes. So the power of the charger is not the limiting factor here, it's the circuitry in the camera. And then we've got a charger that I've had for a while which is the X-Pro Dual Digital Charger and this has plates which attach to the charger and which allows you to adapt it to different kinds of batteries. And as I said, this you can buy with different plates. Um, I've got the one with two Nikon plates here, although I've also bought separately plates for Fuji batteries. So when you're traveling, you can charge one Nikon, one Fuji, or one Nikon, one Canon. You can't get plates for all types of batteries because it depends on the pin types. This is a slightly more complex charger. It comes with an LCD which shows you how each battery is charging. It also allows you to charge with a mains lead or also DC input, which is quite useful if you want to plug it into the car when you're out and about. And obviously you can charge two batteries or just one battery at any one time. So the power output based on um, the mains and also with the settings you can charge on high or low. At high, the power output from this charger is 8.4 volts and 1.5 amps. Obviously when you're charging two batteries that gets divided across the two batteries and therefore the theoretical charging time for one battery would be about one and a half hours and for two batteries would be somewhere around the three hours. The next one we've got is the Nightcore UNK2 charger which allows you to charge two EN EL15 batteries. This is slightly different in that you've got a USB cable built into the side of this. It's quite short, which is a little annoying, um, but you do need to have a charger block with it for it to function. The power output on this is 8.4 volts and 1 amp maximum. Obviously, if you're, again, if you're charging two batteries, that gets divided between the two batteries. So this weighs in at about 66 grams, so it's fairly light, but you've got to add on probably another 100 grams for a power block um, to power it. It does come with a, um, an LCD which shows the health of each battery and the charging and progress of that battery. In theory, this will charge one battery in about two hours, 17 minutes, and two batteries in about four and a half hours. The advantages of this is it is very compact and it is lightweight. Next up, we've got the Anker PowerPort Speed PD5 um, power bank. As I said, it plugs into the mains at one end, so you do need a lead for it. And then at the other end, you've got four USB-A ports. Um, each one will charge at up to 5 volts, 3 amps, that's 15 watts on each, and you've got a USB-C port at the top um, which will charge up to 30 watts. Obviously there's a 60 watt limit across all of them, but it should be more, more than powerful enough to power a number of the other chargers which require a USB power um, block or charging in camera. It weighs about 240 grams, um, about 320 when you add on a lead. It doesn't have an LED, it's fairly straightforward, but it can be used for charging other devices like your iPad, your tablet, your phone. And this Anker power block retails in the UK at about £30. And in theory, this should charge the battery in camera in about the same time as the EN EH7P, so about 2 hours 35 minutes. 
Finally, we've got the RavPower 16750 milliamp hour portable power bank. It's got two charging ports at the end here, one that's 2.1 amp and one that's 2.4 amp. Charges at five volts, so it's about a 12 watt charger. And in terms of theoretical time to charge, if it's charging in camera, it should be the same as the ENEH7P. If it's charging through one of the other chargers, then it will be related to the um, charger itself because it's got more than enough power to power those. And it retails at about 30 pounds here in the UK. So in order to get a real world perspective on each of the chargers, what I've been doing is taking a fully discharged ENEL15B battery and timing how long it takes each of them to recharge it to full in different scenarios. So let's start with the Nikon MH25 charger and it should have a theoretical time to charge of 1 hour 54 minutes. And what I found was in the real world it took 2 hours and 4 minutes. That's about 8% longer than the theoretical time to charge, so not bad. And we can use that as our baseline. Next up was the Nikon EH7P, which is the charger that charges in camera. But when you look at the Nikon um, publicity, they're saying it will charge in about 2 hours 35 minutes. In the real world test we did, it took about 2 hours 24 minutes, slightly quicker than Nikon uh, publishing, and just behind the MH25. Next up, if we look at the X-Pro Dual Digital, um, I charged both a single battery and two batteries in this. And the theoretical time you'll remember was about an hour and a half for one battery and three hours for two batteries. In the real world test, it took about two hours 19 for a single battery and four hours 40 for two batteries. A little bit longer than the MH25, but very slightly shorter than the EH7P uh, for a single battery. Obviously, if you've got two batteries to charge and you're charging them overnight, then the four hours 40 minutes could be advantageous to you for two batteries. And the final charger, the Nightcore UNK2 charger. Again, I charged one battery um, on its own in this and then two batteries at the same time. The theoretical time for one battery, you'll remember, was 2 hours and 17 minutes and for two batteries, 4 hours 34 minutes because it divides the current between the two. The real world test came in at 2 hours 40 minutes for one battery and 4 hours 35 minutes for two batteries. So again, pretty comparable with um, the theoretical time to charge and not far off the Nikon chargers that come with the camera. And finally, I use the Anker power bank with a USB-C to USB-C cable to charge a battery in camera. And that came out comparable with the Nikon EH7P charger at two hours, 24 minutes. And I use the RAV Power 16750 power brick with a USB-A to USB-C cable. And again, that came out around two hours, 24 minutes. So if we compare the results, if you want to charge a single battery and you don't mind whether it's in camera or out of the camera, then the quickest way to charge it is using the Nikon MH25 charger that comes with your camera. And that will do it in about two hours, four minutes. So just over two hours. Next up, you've got the X-Pro Dual Digital, which will charge one battery in about two hours, 19 minutes. Then we've got all of the in-camera options. Um, whether it's the Nikon charger or the Anker power bank or the RAV power um, power brick, which will take about two hours, 24 minutes. And then finally, bringing up the rear, we've got the Nightcore UNK2, which is not far off the pace at two hours, 40 minutes. But that's only one scenario. If you're really concerned with weight, then probably the MH25 is the way to go. You have to have access to mains power to be able to use that one. If you're looking for something that will work off of mains power, is relatively light, is reasonably quick, and has the capacity to charge two batteries, then taking this Nightcore UNK2 with a power brick may be the best way to go, particularly if you're taking a power brick already to charge your phone and your tablet. 
So what do I use? Well, when I'm at home, I tend to use the um, X-Pro Dual Digital because I can charge two batteries at once. And actually time doesn't tend to be um, a big factor for me there. The weight isn't a big factor either. When I'm traveling, I tend to take the Nightcore UNK2 because it's light. It works with a power brick like the Anchor, which I'm probably already taking with me to charge other devices. And I can use it with a power bank when I'm out in the field. In parallel, I'll take a USB-C to USB-C cable, which I can also plug into the Anchor power bank to charge up batteries in camera if the night call was to fail for any reason. So I'm covered from multiple different angles. The other advantage of the Nightcore and the X-Pro Dual Digital is that they've both got LCD displays on them. And what this shows you is how complete the charging process is. What you'll find is each of the chargers has a slightly different profile of charging, but most of them will charge quite quickly up to about 80% of the battery capacity. And then the final 20% is trickle charge to maintain the health of the battery. So, for example, on the Nightcore, I could see that my batteries would charge up to 80% capacity in about 50 to 70% of the time. So if you're in a real hurry, you don't have to wait for the battery to charge to 100%. You could charge two batteries up to 80% quite quickly. And that can be an advantage if you have limited batteries and you want to quickly charge to get back out and take some more photos. So hopefully with this pile of chargers that I've gone through today, it's given you some food for thought in working out what's the right combination of chargers for you. Is weight your primary driver? Is it speed of charge that's your primary driver? Or are you happy relying on the chargers that come with your cameras which perform well, but perhaps don't have all the bells and whistles of some of the other ones? If you're looking for a charger, you'll find links below to where you can buy some of these chargers. They are affiliate links. Um, as I say, none of these chargers were sponsored. None of them have been provided by the manufacturers. They're all ones that I've bought and used over time. So this has been a real world review based on my experiences. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some pros and cons of the different options for charging the batteries for your Z series cameras. Let us know in the comments below what combination of chargers you're using for your Z-series cameras. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos.